Hey guys, today I want to talk about one of the most important aspects of choosing the right microphone, and that is polar pattern. Now this goes for everything from music recording, sound effects recording, and dialogue recording, so by understanding what this is and how it affects your sounds, you'll be able to make better choices in picking a microphone. Before we get started, if you enjoy these videos and you want to support my channel, head over to alexnickerbacher.com. I've got a PayPal donation link as well as a bunch of sound effects that I'm curating from my personal library for your royalty-free use. They've got industry standard metadata and documentation so you can find what you're looking for easily, and I'll be adding more as I can, so don't forget to check back. Okay, so first off, what is polar pattern? What does that actually mean? Polar pattern is part of how a microphone picks up sounds around it, and it's basically the shape of the area around a mic that it picks up those sounds the best. The most basic polar pattern is an omnidirectional one, where it picks up sounds equally well in every direction. You don't have to worry about which way the mic is facing. You can just set it up, and it'll capture whatever happens to be around it. Omni mics are great for recording things like backgrounds and ambiences, from city traffic to wind. And also, they're really good as lavalier mics because when you've got a microphone attached to talent, you want them to be able to turn their head any direction and have their voice sound exactly the same. They're also really useful in music recording if you've got an instrument that sounds really nice in a particular room and you want to get a little bit of that flavor the room adds without having to worry too much about mic position. You can place an omnidirectional microphone right up next to an instrument and it'll capture the natural reflections in the room around it. Next up is cardioid microphones, which are pretty similar to omnidirectional mics, but they reject sounds coming from behind the microphone naturally. Now these are great for recording single point sounds that come from one sound source like Foley footsteps or a guitar or maybe a voice. Sounds in front of the microphone sound nice and present and full and warm, but if I turn this mic around, Sounds from behind it really aren't picked up as well. It's again naturally rejecting anything that's coming from behind the microphone, and it's better at picking things up in front. When you've got a sound within that nice optimal polar pattern range, it's called on axis, and anything coming from outside of that range is off axis or off stage, because again, it sounds a little bit more distant and not quite as full or pleasant. Cardioid microphones also exhibit what's called the proximity effect, where if you move your sound source closer to the microphone, it gives this nice artificial low end presence bump that feels a little bit more bassy and a little bit more warm. Whereas you back off the mic a little bit, it's again more natural and kind of more characteristic of how your ears might hear a sound. That's what makes these mics pretty good all around for everything from sound effects recording to voice recordings and especially that radio voice that you hear a lot in trailers or advertisements. After that, there's supercardioid and hypercardioid microphones, which are basically what you'd expect them to be. They're just sort of cardioid mics on steroids. They're a little bit more directional, a little bit more focused. These are great for when you can't get your mic as close to your sound source as you'd like. So if you're on a film set, you want to record an actor, but you can't get the microphone in there without it being in frame, or maybe you're recording a car and you don't, you know, want to get hit, or if you're recording a bunch of instruments in the same room and you want to kind of isolate them from each other, using a more directional microphone on each is going to give them a little bit more separation in your recordings. And finally, there's the shotgun polar pattern, which is the most directional of the bunch. You typically only see these on film productions where you've got dialogue being recorded or maybe sound effects specifically, but I've also seen them used creatively in music studios where, say, they'll hang a shotgun microphone over a snare drum and only pick that one specific part of the kit up. Again, these are specifically used to reject as much sound from around the mic as possible and only get what's in front of it. And also, the longer a shotgun microphone is, the more directional it gets. So something like a Sennheiser 416, you'll typically see as kind of a good all-around general purpose mic. But there's also the Sennheiser 816, which is a very long hyper-directional microphone specifically for recording dialogue outdoors. Now, obviously, there are plenty of other things that go into choosing the right microphone, but by understanding polar pattern, how a microphone picks up the sounds around it, you'll be that much better able to choose the right one and know when and why to use it. So hopefully that was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me there. And as always, thanks for watching.